when do I add the salt to my swimming pool? So this question assumes that you probably purchased a salt chlorine generator for your swimming pool. You might be building a pool, renovating a pool, or just adding it to an existing pool. And you're wondering at what point can I go ahead and start dumping this salt in? You don't want to go too soon. The first thing you want to know about this is the pool should be perfectly balanced already. And so that's existing pools or new pools. You have to fill it up, balance all of the chemistry. You need to have the filtration system running, the, the chemistry perfectly balanced before you add the salt, because adding the salt's gonna add a bunch of, you know, cloudiness to the pool. It's gonna make the pool water look bad. If it already looks bad, it's gonna get worse. And you want to be able to kind of hit the ground running once the system is going here. And so you wouldn't want to add all this to your pool and then start dealing with this like chronic algae problem that you have or something to that degree. Definitely wait until you've got the pool well balanced. And included in that is probably a lot of people assume, well, it's salt water now, so I don't want to use chlorine. The truth is it's the same thing. Some people know that obviously, but some people don't know that. And they wonder, can I use chlorine in my saltwater pool? And you absolutely can and should. So at first, before you add the salt, you want to make sure that the pool is balanced. Everything's clean, clear filtration systems running. You also want to, if you can, make sure that the water is above 65 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 18 degrees Celsius. And the reason why you would want this is because the salt chlorinator is not going to be able to generate chlorine at very cold temperatures. Most systems will just have an, a thermal detection that just turns off. It won't generate chlorine at those temperatures. Uh, so before you can even count on this chlorine generator to be working, you're going to have to be increasing the water temperature anyway. So you might as well wait until the water temperature is either heated or naturally above that temperature because you know you're getting into the summer. So when you add the salt to the pool, here's a very important thing that I want you to know. You have to test the salt level in the water that you have currently. Don't assume you're starting from zero because you're probably not starting from zero. If it's a freshly filled pool, depending on the source, I suppose that's more possible. But even still, you might have a few hundred parts per million of salt residue or residual in the water from uh, chlorine treatments. And that could be, you know, with an existing swimming pool, maybe the water is a little bit older, you could have a salt level that's so much higher than you think it is, like a thousand parts per million already. So if you go ahead and add 3,000 parts per million of salt to this pool, well, now you overshot. You have 4,000 parts per million and you're probably going to have to drain and refill part of your swimming pool to replace with fresh water so that you can lower that number back down. So it's very important to test the water in your pool for salt levels before you start adding salt. I'll go ahead and tack on to that, that you should probably also, let's say you, you figured, oh, I need 10 bags in my pool. Don't add all 10. I would add like six, seven maximum, and then brush that around for a day or two. And then I would test the water again and see where I'm at. And I would balance up with a couple of more. You really just want to avoid overshooting with salt in your swimming pool. And, you know, if I, how many times I've gone to add it thinking I'll need 10 and I only needed eight or nine, something like that. And if you end up needing more, no, no harm, no foul. But what you don't want to do is just put in too much because again, the only way to get it back out is to pump it out and to replace it with clean, fresh water. From the time that you add the last bag of salt to your pool, I would recommend that you brush the pool, you know, maybe once or twice a day for two full days before you turn on your salt chlorine generator. Maybe this is just, you know, the old hat in me, but it used to be that this can cause problems. Current spikes and failures in the electronics of some salt chlorine generators, if there is a constant or a high concentration of salt that goes through the system. This could happen because the salt doesn't really just uh, disappear into the water when you pour it in there. You'll notice that a lot of it does but then some of it doesn't. And you know, it kind of takes a little while for that to go away. And you want to be careful to not draw in a strong concentration of salt through your pool system, especially when your salt chlorine generator is running and trying to generate chlorine. And so that's why they say, and I say as well, you should wait a little while. And I recommend 48 hours of brushing your pool down before you go ahead and power on your salt chlorine generator for the first time. I'd also like to mention, because I think this is important, there's a lot of people out there with concrete swimming pools. And with a concrete swimming pool, you're going to have an interior surface application, which might be plaster or pebble, something to that degree. And almost universally across the board here, you're not supposed to add the salt right away. 
even if your pool is clean and balanced and all the other stuff that I was talking about in this video has already been met in terms of a checklist, if your pool interior surface is not at least a month old, don't even think about adding the salt to it yet. And I would, I would say further to that, you should check with the person or contractor who applied this interior surface to your pool because likely they are responsible for the warranty for this product. And you don't want to do anything that's going to void the warranty, even if the salt itself really wasn't the cause of any kind of problem that happened. Something else goes wrong with this plaster and there's a problem and you want warranty. Well, if you did anything like adding 800 pounds of salt to your pool before they would have recommended that you do it, now you have a problem because they're going to use that as the reason that you're not getting the warranty. And so that's why you need to be very careful. If there was nobody in which you could ask, I would tell you wait 30 days before you add any salt to your swimming pool and then all the other stuff on the checklist. If you have it installed by somebody else who is responsible for the warranty, like a plaster crew or a contractor, that's the person that you have to ask about how long you should wait before you should add the salt to your pool. And for that matter, you should probably get it in writing. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.